Hello, welcome to this brief video about civil, environmental, and sustainable engineering at Santa Clara University. My name is Dr. Tanya Nilsson, also known as Dr. T by the students, and I am faculty in the civil, environmental, and sustainable engineering department. I am also the advisor for Engineers Without Borders, and I'm the advisor for Society of Women Engineers. And I'm really happy to just have a quick chance today to share with you a little bit first about what is our department about? What is the major? Because students a lot of times have questions. And then what sets Santa Clara apart and why you might want to come here? And my contact info, along with students who would be interested in talking to you and other faculty, are all available at the end of this video. So civil engineering, as shown in this picture, um, had a big part of our past, definitely our present, the infrastructure, the way we get around, our homes, and then the future and what that might look like. But what really is civil engineering? And environmental and sustainable fall under the broad umbrella as civil. Well, I love this billboard. Thank a civil engineer if you like safe drinking water, clean environment, efficient transportation. The one they're missing is if you like inside, because civil engineers make inside possible too. But these are some of the areas that civil touches. It's a very, very broad field. But in the big picture, basically, in civil, you're learning to design the world around you. So whether it's bridges, highways, airports, tunnels, protecting the environment, water systems, all of that infrastructure that creates our cities is something that civil, environmental, and sustainable engineers touch. As a civil engineer, you get a lot of opportunities to be innovative. Uh, we have a lot of challenges that are coming, especially because of climate change and increasing urbanization, and we need some innovations happening. And you really get a chance to make a difference in the world. And whether that's coming up with innovative solutions for structures, you can have things that are stronger and lighter, so they're more sustainable and more efficient, like these really cool precast I-beams there on the picture on the right that are students got to see on a local field trip. The photo on the left shows a group of us in Rwanda where Engineers Without Borders is currently working on a water distribution system for a community to get clean water to where they can easily access it. But I said that in civil environmental and sustainable engineering there are a lot of opportunities for cool innovations what might those look like? Well, imagine you're a major metropolitan area that has very bad traffic, but is also at the confluence of two major rivers. And so during monsoon, you can get major flooding costing millions, if not billions of dollars in damage. And with rising tides, the situation is getting even worse. Well, if you're Kuala Lumpur, your local engineers designed the award-winning Smart Tunnel, which is a storm management and roadway tunnel. It combines two directions of traffic in the upper parts of the tunnel that is a toll road to help pay for itself with space for water to run underneath during normal rainy conditions and big storms. But when you have a major storm, you can even just shut down the tunnel and let the water flow through the whole tunnel and keep your city safe. In the first five years that this was in operation, they actually shut the tunnel down seven times but ran water under the traffic dozens of times. So clever. But we have other problems as well facing us. The United Nations says that by 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will live in major cities. How do we house them? How do we build safe, efficient, durable, sustainable housing rapidly? Why don't we 3D print it? So 3D printed concrete is happening, ladies and gentlemen, and it's super cool. A particular company news story mixes both the rapid type, let's do rapid response, say after a um, dramatic hurricane or some other major event, or for humanitarian engineering and are currently working down in Guatemala, I believe. But we also have issues with water and having clean water and having enough of it. And it's especially critical in Middle Eastern countries where they get a lot less rainfall. So you want to look at solutions where you're not only desalinating water, so you have plenty of clear, fresh water for drinking, but how do you use your water most efficiently? How do you reclaim all of that dirty water and reuse it for other purposes? 
Israel is actually currently reclaiming 90% of their sewage water and reusing it for construction and agricultural purposes. That's amazing. The next closest country is Spain with only 20%, and the United States isn't even in double digits. But I will say, if you notice how beautiful Santa Clara is and how green it is, all of our water for watering the lawns is recycled water, which is really exciting. So a little specifics about each field. So structural engineering is where we look at designing bridges and buildings where they can withstand all their high loads, including earthquakes, hurricanes, major snowstorms. And that can include anything from the world's tallest building like the Burj Khalifa to something much more affordable and sustainable like an earth bag house in Nepal that was a senior design project for our students. Structures are everywhere. I mean, have you hugged a column today? Now, environmental and water resources, it covers everything from getting you clean drinking water to dealing with the wastewater so that we don't pollute our streams and oceans, but also so that people don't get sick because the wastewater doesn't get back into the drinking water. It's air quality, it's land protection and cleanup, and it can be large citywide water projects all the way down to personal aquaponic projects for women in Ghana. Geotechnical engineering, well, that's the base of everything. If you don't have a good foundation and good soil under it, your structure will fail. Just think of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So whether it's an earth dam or a tunnel, you need to understand the geology and the geotechnical engineering. Transportation engineering is everything about getting you and the services and the goods you want anywhere you need it to go. And so that could be airports, light rail, our ports, and even how we safely allow pedestrians and bike lanes to exist with cars. We're lucky in Santa Clara, we have a huge command center in Santa Clara County, which our students get to visit during the transportation engineering course. And finally, we have construction engineering, a critical component to any project because it has to be built correctly. And construction engineering can look at one, the business side, the management side, how do you make this happen? How do you build a multi-story high-rise building and have everything go smoothly to also the construction engineering side of how do you make sure that a structure is safe before it's 100% built but still carrying all the construction loads. And our students actually compete each year in a huge construction competition. So that's a little bit about what civil environmental sustainable engineering is as a profession and a degree, but why Santa Clara? Well, one of the things that sets Santa Clara apart is definitely our small class size and how much our faculty want to develop relationships with the students. They're on the right are all faculty who have gone out of their way to travel with students or do additional extracurricular activities or fun things in the classroom to make sure that your education is a transformative experience. There's also opportunities because we are a small school that you have opportunities to do research which can help prepare you for graduate school and also jobs in industry. And of course, we have our five-year BSMS plan that allows you during your senior year to take classes towards a graduate degree and then continue on and save you time and money. And I have to say that it's such a close-knit community that we have between students and faculty that sometimes the students just go a little crazy. And they were having so much fun in Dr. Doyle's um, water resource class and of course we had the drought happening I want to share some clips not the whole video I will share the um, link to this but let's check out the video in the air but won't hit ground we see the signs of this four-year drought all around it's 
It's too hot, I can't stand the future of forecasts. The rain's not coming back, the drought is everlast. Kelly, no, Kelly, no, and all rise to ask our questions. All right, well, it's a good thing that they're engineering students and not uh, theater majors, maybe with some of the singing, but I think that was an awesome, just some clips of the video, and you saw the link there earlier that if you want to check it out, the whole video out on YouTube. But those are the type of things that our students end up doing because they just have fun working together. But you will be challenged at Santa Clara, um, but because we do create that community right away for the students and help you build that sense of a cohort it makes the learning just that much better and that much more fun and we do want to make sure that you learn some valuable skills your first year so you'll take not only a class where you learn drafting AutoCAD how to read plans but also how to do surveying so you could get an internship after your first year there's our students having some fun in the computer lab now at Santa Clara, you do have to take classes in all areas of civil, at least one, to be introduced to them. And that's a national requirement for our school to be accredited by a national organization, which we are. But then you have four technical courses that you can take where you can either stay broad and study multiple areas of civil as you're still under trying to figure out what you enjoy, or you could focus all in environmental or all in structural, whatever you want to do to get yourself to your bachelor's degree in four years. And we've made sure as well that you can study abroad if you want to, typically during your junior year. You just have to apply and hopefully be accepted into a rather competitive program, but the opportunity is there for you. Now, because of our location in the Silicon Valley, there is so much building going on. There's so many large firms and exciting buildings that there's lots of opportunities for field trips as a civil engineering student here at Santa Clara, you will do a senior design project. And your design project is a year long. You pick your own topic. It could be all sorts of things. There in the bottom left, we had students who went to Rwanda and designed, designed a rainwater catchment system and purification system for an orphanage there in Rwanda. Already mentioned the Ghana Aquaponics and the Nepal Earth Bag House project. Down on the bottom right, you actually see a photo of our students on a timber bridge that they designed. Two years, our students competed in a national timber bridge competition, winning the competition one year. We have two major student clubs for the department. One is the American Society of Civil Engineers and one is the Associated General Contractors. Both of them have regional meetings and uh, potential contests you can compete in. Uh, there is also Engineers Without Borders, but that's a School of Engineering-wide club. As a student coming to Santa Clara in the coming years, you'll actually be able to not only use the Sobrato campus for discovering innovation, the new 270,000 square foot building that we'll be housed in, not only will you use it as a living laboratory while it's under construction, your first two years you will be part of the cohorts that actually get to occupy and use the building. We're very proud that our department has the only department only career fair and we literally get more employers than we have students available or at least we have in the last few years so that's really crazy because there's a super high demand around here so that means both summer and school year internship opportunities it also means that um, those depart those industries are supporting our department and so we have a lot of department and local industry scholarships. And our students have a great reputation locally, not only for their engineering skills, but also their communication skills. So it's seen that we have a step up on a lot of other students. Because the Bay Area is so filled with Santa Clara grads, there's a lot of opportunity locally, but also throughout the United States to um, network with our alumni. And we've had alumni work on everything from in the upper right is a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment facility here in Santa Clara County that we often do field trips to that actually can take your wastewater and turn it into pure, clean drinking water right in that facility. It's very high-tech and cutting-edge. The middle picture there is actually the 
free-spanning carbon fiber roof of the theater at the Apple campus, and we had a number of alumni that worked on that project. We weren't allowed to do field trips during construction because nobody was allowed on the site. Um, but in the bottom right is the Levi Stadium where the 49ers play. Again, a number of alumni working on that project, and we did have a number of field trips to that site, so that was a lot of fun. So with a degree in civil engineering, it doesn't matter if you want to be in a small town or a large town. Civils are needed everywhere. Civil, environmental, sustainable. Again, I'm using civil as a broad term to encompass all of it. Um, it's very common. You can be your own boss, start your own firm. And of course, do you want to work inside? Do you want to work outside? Right? Do you want flexibility in a small in a small company where you wear a lot of hats? Do you want to work in a larger company? There's just so many opportunities in civil and such flexibility in the field, which is really great. So hopefully, um, we might see you join us for civil, environmental, and sustainable engineering at Santa Clara University. If you do have any questions or want to learn more, we have a lot of student leaders that want you to reach out to them. And so you can copy down the link there and go to a page with prospective students where you'll actually see photos of those students and their email addresses. Now, my name I said is Dr. Tanya Nilsson or Dr. T, so my email's there. So feel free to reach out to me, our department chair, Dr. Ed Maurer. And if you're interested in what other sort of research faculty do, you can also reach out to and find any of the faculty and email anyone you want. And then finally, just for fun, if you Google the voices of Santa Clara, a student here at Santa Clara has been doing a series of podcasts, and one of our students, Andrew Jessick, is featured, as well as myself and Dr. Ed Maurer, so you can learn a little bit more about our department. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.